Hi everyone, it's Jennifer Attinger, CTV PR social media correspondent with the iconic superstar Boy George. <laughs> Thank you for being here. And I was sharing off camera that this is a definite full circle moment, being at your concerts, growing up with you, adapting the Culture Club style persona. So truly a treat to be in your space. Thank you. <laughs> and we're here on the set of CTV's new show, new music show called The Launch, in which you're a mentor. Yes. But before we talk about that, I want to talk about you and your philosophies as a mentor. Yeah. It appears that back in your career when you first started, you had such a sensitivity to being a multifaceted performer, from hair to makeup to clothing to actual performance itself. Yeah. Is that philosophy equally important today? Because I believe that set you apart. Well, I think, I think you know, when I was like 19, I mean, I was a club kid, so I was kind of doing that anyway. I was dressing up because I was dressing up. There wasn't. Um, it wasn't career orientated. I wasn't sort of planning to be anything. I was just a show off. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> right. And then I was like, I got to the point where I was like, well, I can't just keep showing off because it doesn't pay the rent. <laughs> and I was watching all my friends kind of getting into bands, like during the punk period. And I was like, maybe I should be in a band. You know, I kind of sang always, you know, when I was okay. a kid. But you know, when you come from where I come from, you don't really think about like being in a band. It just wasn't something that seemed like a, it would ever happen. Right. But because of punk and because of all my friends kind of starting bands, I thought, well, maybe I should do that. I'm not a big planner, do you know what I mean? So I kind of stumbled into being in a band and then discovered I was quite good at it, which is what I do a lot. Right. Like I do photography, I paint, and it's more like I just kind of go at things and go then eventually... Flow? Yeah, go at things. No, I'm kind of quite dedicated if I get into something. Right. So really my kind of pop career was an accident. And I think the difference between then and now is that because of shows like The Launch and shows like X Factor and The Voice, kids know what's possible. Mm -hmm. I definitely did not know what was possible. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? But I suppose what I can bring to a show like this is, you know, the kind of experiences that I've had, you know, who I've become through kind of growing up in the public eye. You know, I can sort of hopefully cut out a lot of the bad stuff. Right. So right. just don't do what I did, <laughs> you know, do these bits, do this bits, and don't do those bits, you know. And, you know, obviously, when you're young, you don't necessarily listen to people, do you know what I mean? But I try to encourage people to enjoy what they do. You know, this is such an amazing opportunity. If you get to sort of do the thing you love and get paid for it, do you know what I mean? You don't, yes, I, I do. I think it's amazing. Look so, what I'm doing right now. Exactly. So, yeah. you know, being able to go to work and say, I love my job, but remember it's a job. Right. It is a job. Right. You know, it, it's not... A hobby. Yeah, you have to kind of be professional. And so, and I think especially nowadays, because people are much more on your case, you know, social media, everyone's a critic. So let's talk about that. Yeah. Because social media has become the new arm of PR. Well, it has, yeah, but, it, you know, I, for me, like, social media is great because, like, you can just talk to people, like, instantly. Right. Like, you can say happy birthday to someone in Arkansas or... Out of Mongolia, you know, you can someone, someone will say, "Oh, my mum's going to the hospital. Can you wish her good luck?" You know, I find most of the things I get asked to do are very kind of sweet, mm -hmm. basic things, and I don't. I'm surprised I don't get more abuse. You don't, and you have such huge followers. Like yeah. today in the audience, we had so yeah. many people that talk. He tweets me. He yeah, tweets. I do, that. And, I, and you know, I chat to a lot of people, and I think, I don't know. I suppose if you don't, if your starting point isn't like hostility, right. then maybe you don't encourage that. I mean, obviously, obviously, there are nasty people out there, but I don't really engage with them. And if, like anyone's got, I only ever respond if I can think of something really funny to say. And usually, I'll say something really surreal that will throw them off. Like, who does your hair? <laughs> you know, I'll say like, oh, I love your outfit. Or whatever. I'll just say something silly, and then I'll block them. Do you know what I mean? If someone's nasty, I just think, why would I even bother engaging with you? Because that's what they want. Right. You react. They get so excited, and then they can. You know, and also when people talk, when people say everyone's talking about the internet, people say, oh, everyone's talking about you. It's like five people. <laughs> it's not a revolution. Ten tweets does not constitute a revolution. So, you know, you kind of give these people your power. But I, I try to use it for positivity. You know, I just like the fact that you can kind of just, you know, people ask you little questions and what do you think of my outfit? And you they're know? shocked that you're responding. 
Yeah, well, I don't think there's anything weird about that. But that's special. It's called social media. Yes. You know, in the title, it was like, when people come to see you DJ and they don't dance, like, it's called dance music. <laughs> and a little bit literal sometimes. Right. You know, I'm Makes like, sense. what confuses you? But, you know? you're, but you're kind, and you talked about the power of kindness today. Yeah, the, absolutely. The, the junket. And yeah. I've heard authenticity today. I've yeah. heard we're taking the show behind the scenes. We're pulling yeah. back the curtain. Yeah. Are those attributes, key attributes of making the show uniquely successful? Well, I think it's just a different perspective on, you know, because in a funny sort of way, when I went to concerts when I was like 17, I didn't know anything about what went on backstage. Do you know what I mean? Right. To me, there was a wizard behind the curtain and you never saw the wizard and it was all mystical. And nowadays, it's more, everyone knows everything to a certain degree. And there are some things you can't teach people. Right. You can't teach people to be nice. Yeah. You know what I mean? They have to either be nice, do you know what I mean? Or you and can't. I saw your tweet, and you had tweeted out something like they're overly confident or they're cocky. Yeah. A lot of performers now, because as I said before, people know what's possible. Right. And they know they can get rich, they know they can get you know, successful, and they can get like branding opportunities. And so they are a little bit like, What's the one I'm looking for? Entitled. Yes. So you no know? entitled. We don't want to see that. No, on the we don't show like today. entitled. No, but you know, in my experience of this show, everyone I saw that was pretty sweet. Right. You know, and you, because of the way, because you, you're spending a little bit more quality time with them, you're able to say something positive. Yes. You know, when I do my work on the voice, I try to say to people, look, this is what's great about you. This is why you didn't get through. This is what you need to work on. Never send someone away unless they're terrible. Even then, I would, I, would hate, I would be careful not to say something really mean because there's no point. Kindness is king. I appreciate kind, your yeah, time. Yeah, kindness is king. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Follow Boy George. Follow the hashtag, the launch. Thank you very much.